Grab your Shopper Club membership card, Wargamers. Today, we're double blasting a trip to the comic book store. We're talking about Black Ops. Not to be confused with Black Hops, USAGI. A fun little comic book from Tim Lim et al. What you're looking at here is the bad guy's hair trigger, and I think that's King Apex Moth. There's the eponymous USAGI, Black Hops. And his allies, Rigor Tortoise and Patri Otter. This is a fun little comic book. Uh, I, you know, it's independent. It's not for the big two. It's a, uh, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? It's a bit silly. Um, you know, it's got, uh, it's got nice art. It's a good, rollicking good time. And uh, if you're into the comic books at all, it's an independent guy's. The kind of stuff you don't see out of the big two anymore. Particularly, look at, oh, show you, look at this. Look at this. I'm not going to go full comic book on you here, but it's kind of smoking hot redhead. Hey, if you like redheads, why didn't you marry one? Totally did, bro. Anyway, we're talking about Black Ops from Guy Bowers and Osprey War Games. I'm not going to go through a full flip through. I'm not going to go through a full review. What you need to know about Black Ops is pretty simple. It is a modern-day skirmish game. You're going to need anywhere from... Four or five figures if you're going to run with a band of hardened professionals, Navy SEALs, that kind of thing. Or up to maybe about as many as 20 if you're going to be using a bunch of mooks, a bunch of terrorists, a bunch of uh, militia, untrained guys. You may want to have a dozen or so civilians. You know, maybe a third party, maybe some police forces. So as you're engaging in all of these black operations if the the local security forces aren't aware that they're in the middle of a clandestine war they may get involved as well the actual war game itself it's an osprey book the art's great the layout's pretty good the quick reference sheet is like it's awful it's just terrible it, it osprey you gotta up your quick reference sheet game i have it, there's gotta be a good one online somewhere i gotta find it the game is right great art a lot of it's recycled. Uh, the game itself is pretty simple. Um, it is a a stat line driven game. Hey, everybody moves three inches or six if they want to be able to shoot at a penalty. And if they want to run nine inches, they can. They just can't do anything else that turn. Activation is pretty simple. It's card driven activation. You're going to take your deck of cards and pull out all your kings, jacks, queens, and aces. I've got my aces over there. I'll show you why in a minute. And then the red and the black joker. The reason for that is on any given turn, your jacks are represent your mooks, just your regular soldiers. Your queens are your specialists. Hackers are queens. You done? You done? Okay. Kings are for heavies, and then aces are for your leaders. The jokers are also for your leaders. So because there are, and then the, the color of the card says whose turn it is. So you'll have a red force and a black force. And on the red queen, all of the red specialists can take one action. So they're going to get two actions per turn. The exception is that when a joker comes up, if it's this, since this is the black joker, team black, his ace can take an action. Or he can order one of the other cards to take an action. So you'll get two or three actions every single turn. Randomized, but everybody gets the same number of activations. Nice little system. That's just for initiative. Once you dive into the actual shooting itself, as I said, it's a stat line driven game. So you have just a couple of real basic stats. It's how good are you at shooting? And that's going to be a simple D6 roll against a target number. How good are you at fighting? And fighting is going to be one of those. It's an odd kind of matched roll. So you're not going to roll two dice to compare. What you're going to do is you get two guys that fight. Let's say they both have a melee skill of five. So they got to roll a, well, let's make it four. So they're okay. They got to roll above their CQC score. So they're both trying to score a success. If this guy succeeds and this guy succeeds, ah, then you have to compare weapons. And if they're in tight quarters, a long weapon will lose. If you're in the open, a short weapon will lose. If one guy wins and the other succeeds, the other guy fails, then the guy that succeeds will do the blamage. And of course, if they both fail, then they just 
they're flailing in the dark. So nice little system where you're both aiming against your target number. It's not just a, a, a straight roll-off or a roll-off with some modifiers. You also have a dedication score, which is basically your morale score, and I think that's it. So really only about three or four stats. What do we got here? Your shooty score, your fighty score, dedication, and then of course armor safe. So once you get hit, there's a chance you survive because of the armor. And the only other thing you have is equipment. It's a pretty solid list of equipment. It's not overly detailed. Assault rifle is an assault rifle. And we've already gone over the bulk of the game. Now, because it is a skirmish game, facing is important. And because it is a game of black operations, security forces are important. This is one of the best games for doing infiltrations that I've seen. In fact, the core combat mechanic isn't groundbreaking. It's not great. It's not novel. It just gets the job done, which is great because it stays out of the way so you can get to the fun bits. If I am trying to infiltrate somebody's compound and I don't know where those guards are, then what I'll do is I'll take out my two red cards and I may put my guards on the 9 card. And of course I'll have several of these. 9, 8, 7. Okay? And then one of these is 9, and one of these is 8, and one of these is 7. And I, let me go grab some figures real quick here. When I do my campaign, and that's where we're, where we're moving towards here, I want to introduce you to these rules. So we can lay out a bit of a campaign, save a little bit of time. So I've got a couple of security forces here. There we go, a couple of SWAT guys. And I'm going to put these SWAT guys over here on the 9 card. I'll mix these up, and, and in a solo game, since I'm a solo gamer, what I'm going to do... We'll bring in uh, we'll bring in one more security guy. This guy is going to be our our leader, and so the other guys look the same. And now we've got guys. We've got a leader with some sunglasses and a flat top, so he's with them as well. If I'm playing this game against you, I know where the nine is, and I'm going to move these around. And two of them are blinds, and one of them is not. Which means as your guys are patrolling this battlefield here, they're going to have to decide which one of these they want to encounter. If I'm playing against you, I'm going to be peeking the whole time so I know how to move these. If I'm playing solo, and this is where the game begins to shine, I can set my 789 over here and I can move these around knowing that one of them is a blind. And now, as I move my infiltrators, I don't know where those guards are. So if I decide, well, I'm going to take this route and I enter this card... Oh, look, I've encountered the guards, and now I can take these guys and put them on the board anywhere under that card, and whoops, I guess I should have gone the other way. As a solo wargamer, this is going to help build a layer of tension and uncertainty into the game that is can, can be difficult to come by. So I'm looking forward to that. And, of course, once the, now there are some fairly complicated rules for as you're sneaking around. Assume this is a building. If I do see a guard and his back is turned and I go ahead and take a couple of shots at him from around the corner, blah, blah, blam. And as in some of the scenarios where you've got just guys wandering around guarding, they will move a random direction. They'll face a random direction. So if I get worried and I shoot him, I might knock him down. And now... I draw noise counters, which makes it more likely that these guys will drift towards where I'm hiding. If they find a dead body, they can raise the alarm, run off, alert the the leader, the ace, if you will. And here's the ace down here just hanging out and say, hey, raise the alarm. And then we go to a straight battle. And then it's like any other war game. For the record, this is one of the aces for the rival intelligence agency that we're going to be doing. Again, he's actually the same figure as this one. But what I did is I painted him in civilian colors. So you've got a SWAT team ace. See, see where it says SWAT on his back? There we go. 
but it's easy to tell that he's a civilian because he's just wearing a simple camouflage shirt. See? Isn't that great? In addition to those stealth rules, where the game shines is how those stealth rules interact with the scenarios. And even if you don't like the straight-up game mechanics of Black Ops, I recommend you get it because the scenarios are worth the price of admission alone. You could use these with any kind of war game, not just modern war games. It would be fine for any of your big box sets from one of the major retailers. And let's go ahead and take a look at those real quick because that's going to be the, the rest of this scenario. If you want to know whether to get it or not, yeah, do it, okay? It's, it's a solid set of rules. You won't regret it. You can use this for uh, World War II. You could have y even the clandestine parts. You could have the OSS versus the Gestapo or French Resistance versus the Gestapo, or against the Vichy French. You could do a kind of CIA versus the KGB. You could do ISIS versus Black, what is it, Black Rock, who are the private security forces. You know, any one of those would work great. You can even do, hey, you know that show that we've both seen, and I dropped the reference because it's got two different intelligence agencies, and, and you know the one. And so it's like we're friends because we watch the same stuff, right? I, I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't have a lot of references that close at hand. Um, all I know is, you know, spy stuff is fun. Get Smart. That's what it's called. That's the one that we both know of. It's Chaos versus, I don't know, whatever the agency that uh, Get Smart worked for. The scenarios, that's what we were talking about. The campaign, and that's what we're going to do here on The Joy of Wargaming. We have a lot of fun with our campaigns, but we've found the campaigns can be a lot more enjoyable if you've got that narrative set out from the get-go. And that's where we get into the beauty of this thing. Now... The scenarios. Let's go over those real quick. They've got three basic confrontation scenarios. Line up your guys and run at each other. Fairly simplistic. No thanks, right? Assault or a breakthrough. Yeah, whatever. The stealth missions are what we're looking at. You've got six of those. Assassination. And for each one of these missions, Guy gives you 36 possibilities for the uh, terrain to set up, what's the setting, and then what's the target. So this assassination might be the enemy leader. It might be a family of one of those. So we're going to need some civilians. It might be an informer, an informant. But where are you going to, where are you going to go after them? Well, you don't know. You've got an extraction, which is your basic escort mission. Espionage, which is uh, get to the center of the board, steal the stuff and get off. Sabotage, get to the center of the board, plant the bombs and get off. And then a raid, which is find and destroy the force. A little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a straightforward line them up and shoot with a few wrinkles. And then you've got surveillance where you put six markers down and you have to go run, grab the marker, and whoever has the most at the end wins the scenario. But it's where those scenarios intersect and in how they interact with, say, the terminal, right? Here's, here's an airport. And they give a suggested layout. But, of course, use your table. Use with the buildings you got. But you're going to need, could be a train, too. Maybe there's a train station in the middle. And so, depending on which of those six scenarios you have, you may need to get to the train, steal a box from the cargo car, and make your escape. Or, that train may be waiting with an important person that you have to, to assassinate. Or, maybe you have to extract your, your, your escort mission is to get the guy to the chopper, Likewise with the compound, well, maybe your target is in the compound. Maybe you have to get around the compound. Maybe you have to scout the compound if you're doing surveillance. Maybe there's three chips in here and three on the perimeter. Maybe you got to check out the toll booth here, the toll booth here, each of these buildings, and then one more in the back. So there's your six tokens that you have to surveil. Or So right, you, you now you see how these all begin to interact to really create, I mean, six times six times six, you're looking at a total of... 206, 256, is it 256 or 216? You're looking at hundreds of different scenarios. You've got a city board that they recommend. 
we've got one that's perfect for that. Um, might be a while before I actually kick this campaign off. I need to do a lot more modern, um, modern terrain. I've got like a smattering of it, but I want to have it all in place because I don't know the order that I'm going to run my campaign in. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about for the rest of this video. So if you just want to know what Black Ops is like, whether or not it's useful for you, I recommend it if you're a modern-day wargamer, if you're looking for a fun skirmish game, if you're looking for a good solo game, these infiltration missions, man, I'm telling you, the guards use a solid AI. It's going to be fun to work with. The blinds are going to be fun to work with. you got a lot of things to juggle, like just enough. So, yeah, I highly recommend it. Now let's talk about the scenario, or the campaign, that we're going to run here on the Joy of Wargaming. So what I have here are our two forces, our black hats and our red hats, right? Those are going to be our two security forces. And once we know what our missions are and what's involved, we'll go ahead and create a, a persona for these. The black hats, if they're the bad guys, they're going to be chaos or the, whatever. The Mission Impossible guys are... Um, that Bond fella, whatever his name is. So, as I said, we've got six scenarios, and I want to play through all six. So that's what this deck is going to be for here. I've got the six clubs, and one through six. The only question is, what order are we going to play those scenarios? And the order is going to kind of determine the narrative. So there's our first deck. Our second deck is going to be, well, let's talk about our third deck first. There are six different board layouts to choose from, ace through six, and that's going to be our third and final draw. So we'll mix those up good and tight, and we'll lay those aside. And there's our third draw. And then our second draw is going to be a mix of red and black. And the reason there's a mix of red and black, again, these are going to generate numbers one through six, the suit is going to tell us who is going to be the attacker. And we're going to play the attacker each time. So we don't really have a side that we're rooting for here. We just have a side that we're playing for. And it's always going to be the infiltrator. Because if you're not the infiltrator, you're largely running an AI for the bulk of the game. So we're going to go through all six of these, all six of these, and only the first six of these. It's possible that the black hats are going to be the attacker in all six. It's unlikely, but it's possible. So let's take a look at our first scenario. It's going to be scenario two on board number six, and red is going to be the attacker. So let's see what that means. The two means we're doing an extraction mission, the escort. The six means the target is a family member of one of these guys. Well, we'll worry about that. Well, actually, let's go ahead and draw our second. So it's an ace, so it's going to be a family member of a politician sympathetic to the red cause. And the six means they're being held in a local village. Let's see what that village board looks like. Looks a little something like this. Got a road running through, a fence around it, and a few buildings on the inside. Our heroes have to... Hmm. And then you go down and you read the description. It says four, missions one to two. The defenders, so the black hats, are going to split their forces in half. Half of them are going to start in the village and half outside. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see, one half is in the village. And the other half may come in from any table edge as reinforcements. The attackers deploy within six inches. There you go. So our attackers are going to come in, try to find the family member, of a politician sympathetic to their red-hatted cause and get out. So there's your first scenario. Interesting. Let's take a look at scenario two. Well, it's actually going to be scenario three. Ace is our card for that, and the location is going to be location number two. So scenario three is our espionage scenario. The ace means that the target is a communications or encryption device, and the two means it is being it is in transit by convoy. So we have to intercept a convoy, 
And, and again, this is the red card. So now having perhaps successfully and perhaps unsuccessfully failed to escort the person off, now Team Red has to intercept a convoy on this board. For our third scenario, we're going to play scenario four, which is sabotage. Red again is going to sabotage. And they're going to sabotage a mainframe or terminal on board number five, which is in a local factory. So factory is a lot like a village, except it's an Ooh, excuse me, it's an industrial area. And we need to read the fine print on this one. The factory... That's going to be... What do we say? Scenario 4 is sabotage, a mainframe. So we're going to need some specialists on this one. And for the factory, for mission 1 to 5, defenders deploy in the factory complex. And a quarter of them are on guard, a quarter of them are, so a quarter of our guys, a quarter of Team Black is going to be guarding the perimeter, or the, the inside the perimeter, a quarter of them will be in one of these outbuildings, and then the other half are ready to rush in as reinforcements. The attackers have to get in, hack something, and get out. All right. Red is hyper-aggressive. Huh? All right, scenario number four is going to be... Scenario six, which is surveillance. And now Team Black is going to do surveillance on an area of interest, and it's going to be in the terminal. So our black security forces. Well, it's, well, no, we need to go read it. For mission six, both teams enter from opposite board edges, and we're going to do the thing where we drop six points of interest and both teams are trying to secure more than the other so they're tracking each other down scenario number five is going to be assassination and who's going to be doing the assassinating red is trying to assassinate an enemy scientist or specialist on board on the city so we got our first urban conflict. We're going to be deep in the city. And for scenario one, if we look at the city board layout, again, this is just a suggestion. You don't need to have this precise road layout for your game. Uh, for one corner of the city is a safe house. So maybe this building here. The defenders team start up to nine inches from here. Wait a minute. The defenders... Uh, if they reach, wait a minute. You know, we're doing assassination. So the defenders, let's see, they can move the defenders. I'll oh, be darn. Half the defenders start nine inches from the corner directly opposite. They must escort the target from this corner. Oh, I see. I get it. So they're taking their charge from here to here. And they can only move it six inches per. The attackers are, what does it say? The attackers enter from any board edge as long as they're 12 inches away from the safe house or the defenders. So the attackers can enter from either this side or this side. Or even do kind of a pincer movement. So Red Hat trying to assassinate a specialist. It's all starting And for the last of the program scenarios, we're going to deal with... Mission number five. It's the only one we haven't looked at yet, and that's going to be the raid. Who's raiding who? Black is finally going to raid. Well, the target is an enemy force, and they're going to raid them on at the local residence. So apparently Team Black is sick of all of Red's interference. So we have a compound here, a little nice little chateau. And for missions one to five, the defender deploys... Half of his forces patrolling this chateau. That's going to be Team Red. I guess Red's leader is in there. And, you know, if they keep getting away with it, maybe we'll call him something like Sam. He's good at hiding. We'll call him Sam Hiding or Hider or something like that. Uh, the defender plays first. The attackers enter from any board edge once the alarm is raised. So the, the 
defenders don't know when the attackers are attacking. So they basically have to sacrifice that first guard to get the notice that they need to be put on, on defense. And then the winner, of course, is going to be... Let's see. Well, you know, it doesn't say. The terrain is... Oh, it says back here on number five. The winner is the one who inflicts the most casualties on the opposition. Now, if you win, whichever side wins, red or black, each scenario is going to get... Wow, this is where it gets even more complicated, even more fun, though. Because for the stealth missions, after each scenario, you're going to roll a d6. And, I mean, this is espionage, right? So just because you won, that doesn't mean that you won. You don't know the full story. If we look, Guy has this great little table up here that shows what you roll. Every time a side wins, it may roll on this table. So, hey, we won. Look. We roll a four, and we get uh, the mission succeeds, you gain one intel. So if you finish the six with more intel than the other guy, than the other side, then you get to be the attacker in that final scenario. Well, actually, red and black are both going to be gathering up intel. But there's a chance, even if you win, you are double-crossed. The enemy gains one intel. Or maybe it's a jackpot. Maybe you secured whatever, you, you hacked a mainframe and you got more intel, so you get two, all right? Uh, the final battle is going to be, depends on who wins, if the black, whoever has the most intel triggers it. If the black triggers it, they have surrounded the red faction's main base and must capture or kill the head of the organization. If the red, so the goal there is for black to get rid of Sam Hyder. If the red triggers it, then again, the black faction, black faction has to stop their plans. I don't know what their plans are yet. We'll figure that out. We'll go over it all before we kick off the full campaign. But that gives us seven complete scenarios. And depending on what that plan is, we may come up with a really, with a very different... Maybe it's an underground complex. Maybe we break out the dungeon that we've used for fantasy or for a spaceship. Maybe we're going to use that for a modern... Um, you know, criminal mastermind base. I don't know yet. All I know is a couple of games I've played of this a few years ago, I had a heck of a good time, and I think you're going to have a great time watching these, these tense infiltrations as, as teams get close to finishing their goal, and then the balloon goes up and all heck breaks loose and lead starts flying all over the place. And then you have that extra layer of the intelligence work on top of it. That's going to be a heck of a narrative, man. I hope you come along with me for the ride. Those of you that do come along each time, I really appreciate your being here. You make it all worthwhile. I'm praying for you.